Hi guys, my name is James Haga, and I am the Director of Advocacy at Engineers Without Borders. Great job. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about the advocacy work that we do as a team right now. Uh, let's start off with what is the problem that we're trying to solve in the development system. So we hear from our African program teams all the time that the development system is undermined by top-down approaches and top-down strategies that are coming um, from foreign governments or big donors that are outside of the on-the-ground context. An example of this is the government of Canada setting a policy that then actually shapes the way the development system and the development approach happens at a ground level. This isn't always the smartest way to do it. And you know, if you think about the system for one quick second, the entire global foreign aid flows in the world, over 80% of that is financed by governments. Governments like Canada, which spends over $5 billion a year in foreign aid across the world. So what's the, the message to take away from that? Politics matters. It has a major influence over setting the agenda and really influencing the way that development happens down through the system. How the way NGOs operate and how projects themselves at a ground level are actually implemented. So our job is to make sure that Canada and other donors like it are creating the smartest, most effective environment for development to happen. Core to our belief is that there are short-term policy changes that can happen right now that will have a massive impact on Canada's global development approach, a positive impact at that, but we know that it's not enough. We know that at the same time, we need to play the long-term game in really making sure that we're changing the way that our political environment works, and we're also getting our citizens much more involved in helping to shape these decisions in the future so that not only we're making smart decisions right now, but in 10, 15, 20 years, when the global development circumstances will be totally different, Canada is still able to be a leader in that space. And so what makes EWB actually really quite unique in the way that we approach advocacy is that we really embrace the entire system. We work at all levels of that system to try and drive our change through. So let's look at an example, a very specific example. In the last week, uh, Canada actually announced that it was signing on to the International Aid Transparency Initiative, which is a major win, and, and thank you to everyone who helped make that happen. So let's look at that. Citizens, for instance, is one core constituency that really influences the way that governments make decisions. In Montreal, in mid-October, there was a, uh, a National Day of Action in support of IATI, and the McGill folks talked to over 700 people in Montreal in one day alone to bring those people's voices into the decision-making process. Another core stakeholder that can influence government is the media, of course. In the federal election in May, uh, EWB sat down with the Globe and Mail editorial board to talk about our vision for a, a smarter development approach for Canada. One of the things that we highlighted was the importance of increasing transparency. The Globe and Mail really liked what we had to say, and they ended up printing a editorial the next day which highlighted you know, the fact that Canada should sign on to the International Aid Transparency Initiative, which was a major push on the government. Now you look at MPs, in the last couple of years alone, we've developed relationships with close to half of Canada's elected officials. That's a lot of different MPs across the country. And the value really comes by virtue of having people spread out from coast to coast who have a local engagement with their MP, like the people at the University of Alberta who've engaged all of their local MPs, and not only talk to them about very specific things like why Canada should sign on to IATI, but also building a relationship with them over time and making sure that they understand who we are and what our approach is to development more broadly. And lastly, you look at policymakers. These are the people who are the experts in our civil service who provide advice to the government and to the minister on what Canada should pursue as policy. We needed to make sure that we were working hand in hand with those people and that they too saw the merits of why Canada should sign on to this policy, so that when it actually, when they put forth their recommendation, it really supported what we were talking about in all these other levels of our systemic approach. So that's a little bit about how EWB tries to move our change through the entire system of how politics and decision making work in Canada. So myself, uh, Ian Froud and Ryan Burke at the National Office, as well as our advocacy distributed team are really looking forward to seeing you at conference. We're going to be talking, having very important conversations about what EWB advocacy's next policy steps are. 
But to give you a sneak peek, one of the things that we're going to be working on is a massive outreach event where we're going to be working with the One Campaign, which is a U.S. advocacy organization, to call on the government of Canada to maintain its foreign aid budget in advance of the next federal budget that's coming in March. So really want to make the case for why foreign aid is a smart investment. So really looking forward to seeing you guys in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, take care, keep on rocking in the free world, and we'll see you later.